Welcome to the My Creative Days podcast, where we will talk about all things DIY, home decor, decorating tips, and creating a beautiful home on a budget. I am hoping our time together will spark a creative idea, help you plan your next DIY, or inspire you to finally tackle that project you keep putting off. Grab your favorite cup of motivation and let's chat. Hello and welcome back to the podcast. Today I am going to, I'm so sorry, I'm turning down my computer. I am going to talk about top coating tips for furniture makeovers. This is something that I get asked about a lot and so I thought I would do a podcast episode about just some different tips and some different questions that I get asked all the time and some some of my favorite things. So as always, if I'm talking about something uh, inside the podcast, check the show notes because I'm going, especially in this one, I'm going to be linking to some of my favorite things uh, in that I'm talking about in this podcast in the show notes. So definitely check those for anything that I'm talking about because if there's one thing uh, I wish before I started flipping furniture and you know furniture makeovers and all of that, I wish I would have known all of these tools and products, which to be fair to myself, they weren't, they weren't available back then when I started, but, uh, just having the knowledge and just knowing that these, uh, products and tools and things like that are out there, it's just going to make your process and your journey so much more easier and so much less stressful. Uh, so definitely check out the show notes for those links. So First of all, whenever you are top coating furniture, uh, you definitely want to make sure that the surface is prepared right. So I'm going to assume like you're top coating over paint, right? That's what I'm going to kind of assume for this for this podcast. Uh, you you need to ensure your surface is very clean, free of dust, grease, and previous fi- residues from d- previous finishes. So when you're preparing your piece of furniture for a makeover, like, you know, you're doing paint or you're doing whatever, you want to make sure that you prepare it anyway. But as far as the top coat, you still need to make sure that you're preparing it as well. You definitely, you know, sometimes let's say I've painted a dresser in my, in our garage, let's just say, and it's it's dried, it's great. And then let's say I don't come back to it until the next day or that night or whatever. There's always going to be a little bit of dust on it. So you definitely don't want to be top coating over the dust or whatever else is on there, right? So you just want to make sure that you prepare your surface before you are top coating. You want to sand your surface to the appropriate smoothness using a really, really, really fine grit sandpaper, 220 or higher. So you're not, you're not, you know, it's not like you're trying to get, you know, your, your paint off or anything like that. You're just trying to make it super smooth, remove any little imperfections. If there's some, you know, a little bit of extra paint or something, uh, but you just want to create a very smooth base for the top coat. So you need to ensure that you're doing that. And then obviously, you know, if you are, you know, you want to make sure, you know, well before you're doing the top coat, but, you know, use wood filler, putty, whatever, you know, if there's cracks and stuff before you were to paint. Top coat is your last step in your makeover. Beside, I mean, if you're selling it, I mean, there's a lot more that goes into it with like staging and all that, but I'm just talking about here, the project itself. That's the last thing you're going to do. So you want to make sure that you do all the other stuff, you know, really, really well before you're, you're, you're at the top coat stage. Okay. So if you are dealing with, you know, porous woods, or if you're dealing with a combination of material materials, make sure that, you know, you may need a primer, you know, before you're doing the paint and all that, uh, a sealer, just depending on what you're covering up. Again, this is all before the top coat. And then even with your, you know, you always want to scuff sand between any layer of no matter what you're doing. So your primer, your paint, your top coat, if you're doing multiple coats um, or you're going from primer to paint to top coat, like between those three steps, you want to make sure that you're lightly sanding between the coats just to make sure that you get rid of any imperfections. Now I'm going to... (laughs) slide in here one of my favorite, all-time favorite products that 
this is what I grab for all the time. I've been flipping furniture and doing furniture projects for more than 20 years. I use an all-in-one paint now. I mean, I use multiple paints, but if I have any choice, I'm grabbing the all-in-one paint that has the primer, the paint, and the top coat all in one can. It is only one can, one product that you have to be worried about. That's it. Uh, And so I will link to that in the show notes. I'm telling you, if you are a beginner, you're in the middle of the game, you are an expert. An all-in-one paint that's got all of that in one can is a game changer. Number one, you're going to save so much time. Number two, you don't have to worry about three separate cans and three separate steps and, you know, rinsing out your brush or getting a new brush or it's all in one can. I'm telling you, this is the one paint that we grab grab for all the time. Unless there's like a certain color I need to do. It comes in multiple colors. Like there's there's beautiful colors in it and they just release some more colors. Uh, so, but it is the one paint that I'm grabbing all the time. It's got all of that in there. So, and they do have, so I reached out to my contact uh, at Dixie Bell and they do have, they have made this all in one paint. So you do not have to put an extra top coat on. I would get that question all the time. When I first started sharing the paint in my videos on YouTube, in the reels on Instagram, I would get, well, do you have to top coat? Should I put an extra top coat on it? You do not have to. It's made so you do not have to. But I think they were getting that question so much that they actually made an extra coat, it's called. Uh, So it's like an extra coat, a a top coat. And I will leave a link for that in the show notes as well. But it's just, if you want to put on an extra coat of something, you know, you can definitely do it. I'm just going to tell you when you put on, well, we'll get to this. So I guess I'm not going to go ahead of myself here. You don't have to do it, but if you want an extra coat, I I always say I would put an extra coat on if you were going to do anything on a piece of furniture that's going to get a ton of use. Think coffee tables. You know, if you painted a dining room table, uh, you know, maybe a side table that's not being used a lot. You you don't maybe really need an extra coat on that. But like the furniture that's getting used a lot, you can definitely put um, an extra coat on that if you feel like that will that will help. So you want to choose the right top coat. So there are tons of different top coats. There's polyurethane, lacquer, varnish, shellac, wax. Those are all different kinds of top coats. I love the Dixie Bell top coat and they have, um, they. I just talked about the extra coat for the all-in-one paint, but they also have uh, just their regular, you know, coat you know, just their regular top coat for their regular paint. You definitely, I also want to add in here too, you want to know what kind of finish you want. So like with Dixie Belle, they have different sheens. So they've got, you know, the satin, the uh, flat, you know, a glossy finish. What do you want it to look like? I don't love using top coats a lot because a lot of them give me a shiny finish. And I don't love that. I don't love that finish. I don't love it for our home. But like I said, Dixie Belle's got the flat. If if it were up to me, I would always choose a flat uh, top coat if I'm using a top coat. But the satin is a little bit more forgiving. Uh, so I'm just going to say that. So, uh, but like polyurethane, that's going to provide a durable water resistant finish. It's available in oil-based, water-based, uh, varnish. It's, uh, durable offers UV protection, but it can yellow over time. Wax. Wax is another one that I, I will use. Uh, you know, you can get antique wax, you know, like a, like a beeswax kind of, you know, finish, uh, Dixie Bell's got a lot of the waxes as well. Uh, it offers a more soft, natural finish. Some of them require some maintenance, like over time. So keep that in mind. Shellac is quick drying, easy to repair, but not as durable as like your polyurethane lacquer, those kinds of things. So, okay, we kind of went through the different top coats. And I will leave a link to the other top coats at Dixie Bell. There, I just... I. I love to use them. Uh, I've used them for years. They offer the different sheens. Uh, they work really well for furniture. I've, they're made for furniture product projects. So uh, I really, I really like them. So I'll leave a link to those too. Not just the extra coat, but the actual other top coats they have. 
Okay, application techniques. This is a big one. I'm, I, I'm, I'm gonna kind of break these down. So tools, let's talk about the tools and your environment. So number one, you can apply a top coat with a brush and you can do you know, just a regular bristle brush. You can do a foam brush. Uh, you can do a roller. My favorite way <laughs> to apply a top coat is with, I've shared it. If you watch me on Instagram, you watch, you follow my YouTube channel. It is a blue sponge. I love this thing. It's under $3. Best investment you'll make. You don't have any brush strokes. You can control it very easily. You can get in all the nooks and crannies. So I will leave a link to that in the show notes as well. It's the easiest way to apply a top coat. So that is my favorite way. You can also spray a top coat. So, you know, there are, you know, you can get a poly like in a spray can, but you can also put you know, like the top coats from Dixie Belle into a paint sprayer if you want to uh, apply your your uh, top coat that way. I We have the sprayers. We've used the sprayers. They are great. But for me, when I'm, especially now, I, I'm not doing as many, I'm, I'm more teaching and coaching others how to do this. So I'm not doing a ton of projects. So it's just easy for me to grab my paintbrush or a roller, or like the blue sponge. You know, I'm working on one project. Uh, so just because there's a lot of cleanup when you have the sprayer and everything out and put together and all of that. So you definitely want to keep that in mind. Next, let's talk about temperature and humidity. So just like anything that, that you're like spraying or anything, you know, paint spray, anything like that, you know, it can't be super, super humid outside. The temperature can't be super hot or super cold, cold, low humidity. It's just you know, I always say we live in Iowa, so I can't work out in my garage, you know, during the winter. So I bring, you know, projects in, but there's a lot of times, like I'm recording this today in the beginning of summer and it's so humid outside. I know I can't paint or top coat outside today. So you definitely top coat is just like paint. You want to have the right environment, the right, you know, low humidity, the temps are good, all of that. So you get the best results when you are applying the, the top coat. So application methods, you want to use thin, even coats rather than, I think sometimes, especially when you're just starting out, because this is what I did. Even when I'm just paint, when I would just paint something, let's just say it's a wall, (laughs) it's a, you know, a piece of furniture, I would glob on the paint to cover it. Just like with paint, a top coat, you can layer it. So thin, even coats is so much better than thick thick coats because you're going to get runs, you're going to get drips. It's just not going to be that smooth, you know, nice end finish that you're looking for. And the thin coats, they're going to dry faster and they're going to dry more evenly. And you definitely want that. You want to, if you're using a brush or even like when I'm using my sponge, I go in the direction of the grain, the grain of the wood, you know, so if you're using, I guess I can't say that because it could be every piece is going to be different, but basically go in the direction of the grain. Um, and then you can, you want to kind of overlap your strokes. So I'm thinking, and strokes, like I have done this many times with a brush and I have done it with a roller, but you just kind of want to go over, overlap your brush strokes or your sponge strokes (laughs) to make sure that you're getting a complete coverage. And one, uh, tip, this is, this is just so funny, but And I don't know if this is going to be easy to explain on here, but I just shared a reel on Instagram and it really shows it. So there's an area in our living room when I, when it's like, like I said, too, too humid or whatever outside that I will bring projects in. And uh, I just brought a project in and I was doing the top coat on the top and where I set it in our living room, where the sun hits, you can also, you can when you're like at eye level with the top of a piece of furniture, you can actually see where the top coat is or where you've been. Does that make sense? So uh, if you've got an area in your home, in your garage, in your workspace, whatever you're doing, where you can get that like sunlight where it's just bouncing off. And if you, you know, get down to eye level with the piece of furniture, you can see where, you know, you've wiped on the top coat. That That's really helpful. Uh, so, because usually top coats are clear, right? And so sometimes you can't tell where you've been, but there's an area in our living room. It works great for that because I can totally, and it's not even just our living room. Sometimes it's just the way the sunshine or the sunlight's hitting. 
you just, if you can get eye level with like the top of the piece or what eye level with wherever you are replying it, you can see the shiny where the, the top coat's been and then the, the, the dry or the um, dull area where the top coat hasn't been. So that's just helpful. So you're getting in all the areas. Drying and sanding between coats. So you want to allow adequate drying time. So every top coat is going to be different, but just look on your can or your whatever you're using and see what the drying times say. But also, you know, again, you have to take into account, is it really humid? Are you, which you shouldn't be doing it then, but you know, just take into account, okay, today's a little more humid. It's going to take a little bit more drying time. You just want to make sure it's completely dry between coats because the last thing you want to do is you think it's dry and then you try to like go in and sand and then like you've got, you know, gunk. It's all gunked up now because it wasn't fully dry. So you just want to make sure it's fully dry. If you are even questioning it, don't do it. Don't just let it still sit. I mean, don't go on to the next step. Just let it still sit. So like I said before, if you're doing multiple coats of the of the um, top coat, you want to sand between the coats. It's a light sand. We are not using elbow grease sweating. <laughs> we are not like getting into this. Like sometimes if you, if you know what, I, if you know, you know, uh, sometimes when you're sanding, you're like, oh my gosh, my arm's going to fall off. That is not what this is. A light sanding between coats of top coat. And you're going to be using a 320 or higher grit sandpaper here. Like nothing less than that. Uh, cause you're, like I said, you're not really trying to disturb the surface or anything. You're just trying to get, remove any little imperfections and create, you know, that smooth surface for your next coat. And then you definitely have to remove the dust from that sanding before applying the next coat. So you can use a tack cloth or a damp cloth or whatever you like to use, but or just like a lint-free cloth, just to get that dust off. Because again, you don't want to apply the top coat over a bunch of sanding dust. Final coat consideration. So like you can use an ultra-fine sandpaper or sanding pad to give the surface a final smooth touch. And then for hot, if see, if you're using a high gloss finish, you can buff the final coat with a polishing compound after it is fully cured. So see, I don't do all those things. You know, if I have my all-in-one paint, I don't have to do all these extra steps, but if there's a certain look or a certain way you want something, you can think about doing these extra things to give you the best results. So let, I'm going to go through some things that have come up. So I get a lot of, you know, random questions. I've got this or this happened. What do I do? So I kind of added some of these to kind of just because these questions have come up and these are the things that uh, you should do just to avoid these things or to fix these things if they happen. So deal, dealing with runs. So remove the excess as soon as you see it, if you can. So just use a clean brush or a clean, uh, you know, the blue sponges that I like just to brush out or rub out any runs that you have immediately after the application. Uh, that is going to be the best way to get rid of them. And then once it's dry, you can sand out any runs and then reapply it if needed. Uh, so you definitely do have that option, but if you can catch it first, that's going to be your best option. Avoiding bubbles. So this is a big one that comes up all the time. Number one, do not shake or like stir really fast your, your top coat. You can store, st stir the finish gently to mix it, uh, without getting all the air bubbles, Right. So, and if you've, you know, stirred it and then you think you're worried about air, let it sit a second, you know, like let it just be for a minute just so it can kind of settle before you apply it. Use long strokes to uh, minimize bubbles. And if you are using a sponge or like a really, like a really spongy uh, roller, you don't want to saturate them with the top coat. So you don't need, you know, you don't need it soaked with top coat. You don't want it like soaked, soaked, soaked. And then you don't want to push hard. Like if you, it's your roller or your sponge, if you're having to push really hard and um, you need more product on your sponge or on your roller, you shouldn't have to be pushing at all because that is going to give you a ton of bubbles. You're going to get, you know, on the outsides of your rollers, you're going to get those lines of just the top coat. So it's... Thin, even layers, uh, 
and then just don't push hard or don't squeeze. You know, if you're using the sponge, you don't want to squeeze as you're applying. Uh, you're just hanging on to that sponge and you're letting the product, you know, rub off onto the onto the dresser or whatever you're doing. Same with the roller. You don't need to use all your muscles to, you know, push that roller across the the dresser. You just, you know, you want the the roller is just applying the top coat to the dresser, if that makes sense. So those are some things that you need to, you know, think about so you avoid the bubbles. I get that question a lot. Maintenance. So if you top coat something, clean the finished surface with a mild, non-abrasive cleaner. Depending on the usage, uh, depending on the piece, depending on the top coat you used, you could consider reapplying a top coat every few ye- few years to maintain protection. I have never had to do that. So that's just something to remember. Okay, so here's a couple of consider- things that I thought about for different finishes, depending on what you're using. So if you're using an oil-based polyurethane, use mineral spirits for thinning and cleaning, and you need to allow extra drying time. If you're using water-based polyurethane, use water for thinning and cleaning. It does dry faster and less, and it's less odor intensive. Some of the top coats, I'm telling you, I can't use them because of their smell. If you are sensitive to smells, like I can't even Sharpie markers or permanent markers. If there's like, we have some real thick ones that we've made different things, use them for different things. That I have to leave the room. Those are just so, it just gives me an instant headache. So some, keep that into consideration. The Dixie Bell top coats, any of them, I'm, I'm fine using them in my house. Like I, I'm totally fine using them. So that's just something else to think about. You do want to have a well-ventilated area, especially if you're using certain top coats because some of them smell so strong. So just make sure you do that. And protective gear, wear gloves, um, use a respirator uh, when you're using solvent-based finishes. You know, keep all of that in mind. But yeah, that's it. I went through everything. I thought there was another whole section, but I'm nope. It, that was it. I get questions a lot about top coats. Uh, when to use them? How to use them? Wait, this is happening. I'm getting bubbles. Why is that happening? Um, I'm getting brush strokes. What should I do? Uh, how do I apply it? You know, all those kinds of things. So I thought this would be a super helpful podcast episode to record. Uh, If you found it helpful, please share this with somebody that would also find it helpful. I always appreciate when you share the podcast. It means the world to us. It's kind of hard to see when you're recording podcasts. It's hard to see how many people are listening, what they find helpful. So whenever you share it, I'm so appreciative. When you send me emails and ask me questions about a project or about something something else. Uh, it, it gives me tons of ideas for what to record here for the podcast. I never share your name. Um, same on Instagram, or if you're on my website or you're on YouTube, uh, you ask a question or a comment or something there on those places. Um, it's just great for me to know what I need to expand on or what else I need to, um, produce for, for, so it's super helpful for you. So that's why we're doing what we do here at my creative days. So, um, Keep the questions and comments coming in. Share the podcast. We love you for that. Make sure you check the uh, show notes. I'm going to link to all of my favorite things that I talked about here in this episode. And until next time, I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you very soon. Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to the podcast. I'm grateful that you tune in every week and that you share the show with your family and friends. I love having creative chit chats with you and my hope is that this podcast will inspire you to try a new project, start a DIY that you've been putting off, and decorate your home exactly how you want it. There are a few ways you can help us with the podcast. Follow the podcast so you don't miss an episode. And if you could take a few minutes to leave the podcast a review, that would help us so, so much. Again, thank you for being here and I look forward to our chat next week. Bye-bye.